a long, long time ago. Um, I'm 42 nearly now. When I was 19, I started. I've not done any um, combat sports before I was 19. So I didn't have any, uh, I was useless at football, useless at rugby, done nothing, um, nothing else. I think I went to and watched a karate class once when I was about seven and never took part in it. It just frightened the hell out of me. And then when I was 19, I got into Taekwondo. Um, I was trained under um, a, a very high uh, level uh, master, Mike McKenzie. And I did WTF Taekwondo for about three and a half years. And I got my black belt in that. And then, um, no disrespect to Taekwondo, but once I got uh, to the mid black belt, I got a little bit bored. And around about that sort of time, it was around about 1998, the UFC had been out and it was just starting to come over into this country on VHS. <laughs> Showing my age now. Um, and then uh, that's when the sort of really interest came in. So I got into the uh, mixed martial arts side of things very, very early on. And I ended up having my first mixed martial arts, um, what you would call it amateur fight now, um, back in 1998. So 20 years ago this year, so a long time ago. And the good thing uh, that I've always said, and I always continue to say about mixed martial arts and grappling and the whole mixture of things is that it's kept me interested for 20 years. Yeah. So although Taekwondo bored me a little bit towards the back end, this has never bored me. I'm still learning and I turn up to the gym every single time and still expect to learn even off, um, even off fresh students. They might do something a little bit different. They might move the body in a slightly different way. And I'm like, oh, OK, maybe we can adjust that. And it's kept me interested all this time. So and it continues to keep me interested. Um, it's awesome. I mean, I, I've always, um, when I, I taught a children's class when I were a black belt at Taekwondo anyway, so pretty much for 20 years I've always, I've always taught. Um, when I moved on from that, I had to teach myself. Um, so I had to relearn a lot of things. And also the way that you throw techniques in Taekwondo, you wouldn't necessarily throw that in a cage. So you've got to relearn a lot of things as well. I had to use your hands a lot more. And when I've got a bit more well-rounded, um, then people used to come to train with me. And it wasn't particularly me teaching to start off with, but I needed training partners. So people used to come to train with me um, from all around, um, and, but you know, particularly the sort of Yorkshire area. I've been here obviously a long time, so um, that's how I first got into it. And then as things progressed, um, obviously new people came in, and I'd already gathered loads of knowledge, and I were able to then pass that over. Now we've got a zone academy in Castleford, uh, the Neo Shoot Academy. That's really been the evolution of 20 years worth of experience. Really, it's all come together for me. And uh, it's absolutely brilliant because not only do you teach people, um, but you also teach them about themselves as well in a lot of ways. And I've seen people progress and become different people. They sometimes are walking into the gym and uh, they feel very low about themselves, low self-esteem, things like that. And I've seen things like that turn around. And for me as a person, that's, that's all I need. It's not particularly about somebody being an awesome fighter. Is it enhancing their life? And that's what I found that um, training martial arts and teaching other people does. And that's what makes me happy. Well, Neo Shoot, um, and Neo Shoot uh, the, the, word, the name comes from uh, Japanese really, so Neo is new, and then it comes from shoot fighting, which is um, Japanese mixed martial arts basically. Uh, like I say, back in the day, back when I first started, you had the UFC, but the UFC wasn't under the unified rules, there were no set um, rules or anything like that, so there was a lot of pancreas sort of rings fighting as well, and they seemed to be a little bit more submission orientated, whereas the UFC was a bit more ground and pound, a bit more brutal, the Japanese art seems to have a better flow to it. And that's what really caught my eye. And it's what I really based Neo Shoot on, is that, is that kind of style. And as we've moved on, we've kept that philosophy. So um, uh, like I mentioned, Steve in my playlist as well. Steve Wynn Stanley has been with me, training with me since 1998. So we have, you know, yeah, we've been friends for 20 years. You know, I probably get on his nerves much, much more than he gets on mine. In fact, he's never got on my nerves, but um, you know, you, you do build a bond and I sometimes liken it, although it's not exactly, I sometimes liken it to that band of brothers that um, people experience um, things together, you know, they, they grow up together and literally, you know, for 20 years I've grown up with this, uh, with this group, this car of individuals who come and train with me regularly. So when we, we moved from, uh, when you know me from, is from Wakefield, when we moved from Wakefield, we've still got training partners that come and train with us in Castleford and this means sometimes it's two buses for people. And that, that's, that genuinely warmed my heart when people turn up and you're like, wow, you know, you've, you've made all this way and that, you know, that's, that's really nice. And that shows the sort of family feel that we have at Neo Show Academy. Yeah, well, it was quite easy actually because um, at Neo Shoot we have a technique of the month. 
So what we found was, and this again was Steve's idea, that what we found was that you go over a technique, then you don't really drill it. So next week, because you might get bored of it or whatever, you're, you're tending to move on too fast, particularly for newer students as well. So what we decided to have a technique of the month, and our last, our last month, believe it or not, it was anaconda chokes. And that's where the different variations have come from. Um, and again, we have different training patterns, different size bodies, different size people. We have um, ladies training with us, we have kids training with us as well. So everybody's different and everybody has a different way of um, doing things. And definitely the Neo Shoot philosophy is that just because I do it one way doesn't mean that you have to do it um, the same way. It's not a traditional martial art. We're adaptive and we can change and we continue to change as well. So if somebody came along and showed me a different way of doing it and I thought that it could be worked into the system, then I would quite happily adopt it, not a problem at all. So that's the sort of philosophy around it, constantly adapting, constantly changing and just being the best that you can be really you know I've constantly find don't have one set way of doing things constantly evolve um so yeah that's uh, sort of the philosophy behind it and we did um submission of the month so we've we've had leg locks we've had arm bars and all things like that and again different ways of doing it different angles different setups different amounts of pain <laughs>